Assalamu alaikum students how are you hope you would be doing great so we will continue our lecture your subject is business research methods and advanced marketing research this is our fourth lecture related to research design last time we were discussing population and sampling techniques within a such design as i told you that uh, in next lecture we will cover the sampling techniques in detail or sampling procedures in this lecture we will cover only probability sampling techniques you remember we discussed two main techniques in sampling procedure that is probability and non probability so in this this lecture we are going to cover only probability sampling techniques within probability we will discuss three main techniques which are used in probability sampling there is simple random sampling systematic sampling and cluster sampling our the the left part non probability sampling you are watching is to be covered in next lecture first of all what is probability sampling in last lecture we discussed bit about the probability sampling now we are going to remind uh, remind once again that when an objective procedure is in which the probability of selection is non zero and is known in advance for each population unit that is said to be as the sum probability sampling as when i said the chance of occurrence is equal or you can say the probability selection is non zero and before collecting data the researcher knows what are the population units and from where he is going to collect the data in advanced researcher is knowing about their population sample and from where he or she has to collect the data <coughs> excuse me sorry for that so the second point that is written on your ppt is in front of you that is it is also called random sampling and it ensures information is obtained from representative sample of population we have discussed all these things i am just reminding sampling error can be computed we have we did not discuss uh, this thing in last lecture actually when you collect data you have a chance of sampling error that you have missed some population from your representative group so within probability sampling there is a chance to compute the error while in non probability there is no chance of calculating computing the sampling error so it has an added advantage that you can also compute the sampling error further survey results can be projected to the population so in last lecture when i was discussing and giving you example related with the media so i was discussing with you that many people have objections on their surveys that from that data has been collected no it does not represent the whole pakistan no uh, the media which is discussing cannot represent our thoughts usually people speak these kind of sentences but because a prior strategy has not been defined to represent the whole population to project the whole population so within probability it is it it provides good results to project the whole population 
नेक्स्ट इज रिलेटेड टू विद दैट इज मे अदर कंसेप्ट ऑफ जनरल जनरलाइजिलिटी बट आई थिंक सो दैट विल बी कवर्ड इन अवर नेक्स्ट लेक्चर सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डिस्कस इट हेयर सो इफ आई मीन यू मे आस्क मी दैट इन क्वेश्चन सेक्शन so the last thing which we are going to discuss related with the probability sampling that is more expensive than the non probability sampling with added all added advantages there is a one liability on the researcher that is it it's expensive it cost to the researcher relatively non probability sampling so these were the all some traits our main points related with the probability sampling now we are going to discuss three main important kinds of probability sampling the first of all is simple random sampling srs simple random sampling in this kind of sampling probability sampling technique population members are selected directly from the sampling frame the frame which has been created i have discussed in your previous lecture related with the frame to detail listing down your sectors your units of population so from population members are directly selected from the sampling frame then second thing is equally equal probability of selection for each member sample size or population size so it gives a chance of equal probability chance of occurrence is equal so i hope in statistics subject you have already covered probability that what is probability and how chance of occurrence happens so i am not going to discuss the probability or chance of occurrence i consider it that you have already studied in your statistics subject i think so you have covered your descriptive and inferential statistics and mostly this topic is covered probability or chance of occurrence here is an example how it is it provides equal chance of occurrence equal probability of selection sample size divided by the population is equal to your probability selection procedure there's a 400 is what your sample size total is 10000 and 0.04 is what equal probability of selection how this is happening now let us suppose you have thousands and lakhs of data how you will be collecting so right now you have fast machines computers which can make your job easy and you can calculate your sample size population and equal probability selection so computer lists are generated and then randomly numbers are generated and the persons are selected that which are the person who are the person they will be contacted for the survey so this is what somehow formula n represents the number of case in sampling frame and the capital n represents the sampling frame small n represents the cases in sample and and capital c then n small the number of combination subsets of n from n so you have understood what do you mean by the n n is what total sampling frame work or you can say to your population and n is a small number of this is what you are at 10000 is what n capital n small so n is what you are 400 so like this this is a formula f is equal to n divided by n the sampling fraction 
0.04 has been extracted this is what by this formula this has been extracted the job has been very much easy with the uh, softwares and computer you need not to calculate these things manually this is just only for your understanding how things happen otherwise normally the softwares and computers help you out and you can find out your exact equal probability of selection of every member through some softwares and computers so what is the object to select n units out of n such that each n capital c small n has equal chance of occurrence and what is the procedure to use table of random numbers a computer number generator or mechanical device to select a sample so i have already discussed covered all these things they are how this happens how this calculation is done and i have also discussed related to the computers this is another technique that is systematic sampling the first technique in probability sampling we discussed is simple random sampling the second technique is systematic sampling what researchers usually do in this kind of uh, technique they usually order all units in the sampling frame based on some variable in number from 1 to n let us suppose uh, you are looking here there is a picture of uh, people standing there the blue one are selected how they are selected the first two are left then the third is selected then two are left and the then the sixth is selected after two one person is selected for the survey this is what systematic let's say suppose you are going to collect information about the coronavirus uh, from tib housing colony so you need to first select the street so you will select each third street and from each third street you will be selecting each second house so this is what a systematic process you will not consider who is living there either male female either either there is a large family or small family rather you have developed a system of collecting information related to corona from the tib is i have discussed that systematic method the here is an example n is what capital n is what number of unit in the population from 1 to n and small n what you want the sample size you want let us suppose is 20 so n divided by n is 5 <coughs> randomly select an integer between k and 5 so from 1 to 5 you need to select one number let us suppose choose 4 and then take every kth unit let's say suppose we start with 4 and then you will take every fifth unit the table is also showing the same example here the next technique in probability sampling is cluster sampling so what is cluster sampling cluster of a population units are selected it random and then all or some randomly chosen units in the selected clusters are studied now what are the steps first population is divided into mutually exclusive and exhaustive subgroups or clusters ideally each cluster it equally represents the population if you remember i gave you example of uh, population collecting from the four provinces of pakistan related with the footwear or sports shoes if you remember that example i have already quoted that example in your previous lectures 
and a simple random sample of a few cluster is selected all are some random chosen units in the selected cluster are studied and here is an example of creating clusters first of all they have uh, divided the regions green is north yellow is central north central red is central blue is south central and the, the pink is south please pardon me if i have mistaken the numbers i'm a bit color blind so what is written here divide population into clusters usually along geographic boundaries first step which i have elaborated for you then randomly sample clusters from this is suppose from the north high level and, and the, these kind of high level is selected from the 17 then 14 then 15 from each randomly sample clusters are selected then measure the units within the sample cluster within a sample cluster each unit is measured and if you remember my previous example that was also uh, that will also help you to understand cluster sampling okay so here's an example uh, here's a further discussion related when to use stratified sampling and when to use cluster sampling because both are somehow uh, you will feel that both are somehow same things when you are going to have primary research object when you have primary research objective and you are going to compare the groups so use it the stratified sampling and using stratified sampling may reduce sampling error it has also a benefit when you have objective of minimizing sampling error or when you are going to conduct a primary research and your objective is comparing the groups use the stratified sampling and if there are substantial fixed costs associated with each data collection of location use cluster sampling and when there is a list of clusters but not individual population numbers then use clusters means if target is not individual target is main focus is cluster a particular group then go with the cluster sampling so this was all from today and uh, we will try to learn uh, non probability sampling in our next lecture thank you for now take care allah face